Hello, and welcome to Arcadia University's BI 327 Histology course. Uh, this series of lectures is going to take a look at the respiratory system. And in the first mini lecture, we're going to take a look at general characteristics associated with the respiratory system. As always, with all of these topics, I encourage you to take a look at the objectives that are listed uh, on the web page and in this handout. Um, because it'll help you to understand what are the important concepts with this topic, as well as provide you with an opportunity to use these as study focusing questions if you're interested. Now, if we take a look at the respiratory system as it's organized as a uh, essentially structure of uh, functional organs within the body for a specific, specific function, um, we're gonna see that the respiratory system is essentially divided into two functional subdivisions. The first is the conducting portion. And within the conducting portion, we're essentially looking at structures within the respiratory system that are gonna be involved with uh, modifying the air from the outside world, relatively dry, arid air, maybe particulate material in it, uh, maybe hot, maybe cold, uh, but essentially it's gonna be very different from uh, the very susceptible um, regions of the exchange deep within the lungs. And so we want to try to protect those very vulnerable regions of the lungs by bringing in, oxygen, bringing in air and modifying it in some way. And so within the conducting portion of the respiratory system, we're gonna be moistening the air, uh, we may be warming the air, and ideally freeing the air of particulate material. So minimizing the harmful properties that could affect the very vulnerable regions deep within the respiratory tract. Uh, the conducting portion of the respiratory system include areas like the nasal cavities and sinuses, the pharynx, the larynx, um, the bronchi, and then the conducting bronchioles. Ultimately though, the goal of the respiratory system is to get the air down into the deeper regions within the respiratory system where we're actually gonna have the respiratory portion, where we're actually gonna have exchange of gases between the air that's either breathed in or breathed out and the blood which is going to be transporting uh, these materials throughout the body. And so the respiratory portion of the respiratory system is going to include the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, the alveolar sacs, and the alveoli. And these are going to be very thin walled structures within the body, within the lungs, that are going to be very vulnerable uh, to potential pathogens, uh, to harm, and so it needs to be protected in some way. And that's what's occurring within the conducting portion of the respiratory system. Now, starting out with some generalizations, take a look at the epithelia of the respiratory tract. Uh, the upper portions from the trachea down to the bronchioles, we're gonna have a pseudostratified columnar epithelia. Uh, it's gonna be ciliated with a lot of goblet cells. So we're gonna be reducing mucus uh, to essentially moisten the air to trap uh, the particulate material, but we're going to have cilia that are going to be beating to keep the mucus from accumulating in those deeper regions. As we go down into the terminal bronchioles, the epithelial lining is going to become more simple columnar, still ciliated because we want to be able to continue to propel whatever mucus that gets down into that region back towards um, uh, the opening of the mouth uh, so they can be expelled. Uh, we're also going to start to see some unciliated clara cells which are gonna be releasing factors uh, to uh, essentially coat uh, the lining of the respiratory tract within the terminal bronchioles. Within the respiratory bronchioles, those ciliated cells are gonna drop out, leaving the clara cells behind uh, as the predominant cells lining the epithelial lining. And then ultimately, when we get down into the alveolar ducts and the alveoli, what we're gonna have is gonna be a simple squamous epithelium, uh, simple squamous cells to minimize uh, the distance or the barrier between the air and the blood to allow for a very rapid diffusion of gases across the boundary. If we don't get secretions within uh, the respiratory system, uh, starting out in the conducting portion, we'll have a lot of mucus that's being uh, produced, moistens the air, uh, traps particulate material, uh, and this is being produced by the goblet cells from the trachea down to about the level of the bronchioles. We're going to have proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans, which are going to have properties similar to surfactant and minimizing the surface tension as we're going down in the level of the bronchioles. And that's going to be produced by the clara cells. And then we're also going to have surfactant. Uh, 
surplus surfactant is going to be a very important mechanism for redu reducing surface volume to maintain the, the patency, the kind of inflated characteristics uh, of those very thin portions of the lungs down and out the uh, respiratory uh, region when we're talking about the alveoli. And the surfactant is going to be produced by type 2 pneumocytes, and we'll talk about that later on in the series of lectures. Generalized support within the respiratory tract, uh, respiratory passages, we want to make sure that we maintain the, the open lumen uh, because the only way we're going to be able to breathe in and breathe out to allow for this exchange to occur is if we can keep the passageways open. And so we're going to start out at the level of the trachea down to the bronchioles with cartilage being present. Uh, so uh, still flexible but relatively rigid support uh, that's going to be present there. By the time we get down to the level of respiratory bronchioles, we're going to have smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is going to be very good for providing support to the structure. It also allows you then to contract the smooth muscle and regulate the airflow a little bit better than what you can have with the rigid support, still flexible but rigid support, of the cartilage at the upper levels. Uh, and then finally, as we get down into the bronchioles and the alveoli, very, very thin structures, we don't want to have barriers there. We don't want cartilage. We don't want smooth muscle. So we're going to have a little bit of elastic fibers there to give it uh, some resiliency to allow for expansion and uh, recoil uh, without damage to the region. So we have patency of the alveoli, uh, but without a whole lot, which is going to be blocking the diffusion of materials from the air into the blood system. So we can start out with uh, strong support, rigid support, more controlled support with smooth muscle, and then elastic fibers down in the alveoli themselves. As we said, we take a look at the conducting portion of the respiratory tract. It's involved with conditioning the air, so producing lots of mucus, essentially producing lots of snot, uh, which is going to have the ability to moisten the air. Uh, we've got lots of blood vessels which are going to be present, especially within the nasal cavity. People that have nosebleeds know uh, a lot about the, the blood vessels within that area. Uh, the blood vessels in that area are going to be able to carry uh, warmth, carry heat, uh, so that we're going to be warming the air uh, as it's being breathed in. Uh, and so hopefully by doing that, by warming the air, by moistening it, producing lots of sticky snot, we can free the particulate material, free the air of particulate material. This is going to begin at the nasal cavity and nasal sinuses, so again, hopefully breathing in through your nose. Uh, and it's going to end at about the level of the bronchioles. We take a look at uh, the epithelial lining. Most of the conducting portion of the respiratory tract is going to be lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelia. Uh, so again, pseudostratified columnar, falsely stratified. So all these cells are sitting on the basal lamina. Not all the cells reach to the apical surface. Lots of ciliated cells. Uh, so you can see the cilia along the surface. And then goblet cells, which are going to be involved with producing the mucus. Uh, the cells that don't reach all the way to the apical membrane are going to be called basal cells. These are stem cells. These are cells that are going to be capable of dividing to replace the epithelial cells as they're needed. The cilia, as we've described previously, is going to be uh, a good uh, microtubule core. It's going to be able to move. It's going to be able to beat. And in doing so, uh, it's going to propel the mucus towards the opening of the respiratory tract. Because again, we don't want that mucus, which is, is very good uh, at covering the epithelium, trapping and trapping bacteria, debris, moistening the air. We don't want that, by the force of gravity, to be drawn down into the more susceptible, uh, vulnerable regions of the lungs. We don't want the mucus down there uh, where it's going to interfere with the diffusion of air uh, across that barrier, diffusion of uh, gases from the air into the bloodstream. Underlying um, the respiratory epithelia throughout most of the conducting portion is going to be very rich vascular lamina propria, uh, loose connective tissue. In many cases, especially within the conducting portion, uh, the, the higher regions of the conducting portion, we're going to have serous and mucus secreting glands. Uh, primarily mucus secreting glands as being the dominant source, uh, also some myoepithelial cells uh, to help propel the mucus um, through the the gland structures through the duct structures. Uh, often see lots of uh, lymphocytes, small uh, nucleated cells sitting underneath the epithelia where they release IgA, uh, an antibody uh, which can be involved with protecting 
uh, the mucosal lining. So again, an immunological protective mechanism. That finishes up our, our general introduction to the respiratory uh, system. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu and hopefully come back for part two of this lecture series.